Hey guys, Jeff at Hubie's Garage, and we are still on the Bel Air, uh, breaking this thing up into segments. We've been working on the brake lines, been working on the fuel lines, and uh, run into a lot of roadblocks. We've run into a lot of issues with ordering parts and needing to do further uh, repairs. So uh, this one we're going to break down even further. We're just going to go ahead and do front brake shoes, and uh, we also had some issues with the front hubs that I did in the previous video where we talked about conversions and uh, we're going to actually go ahead and do those and mount those up to the drums go ahead and mount up new brake shoes and we're going to go ahead and install those as well as grease the wheel bearings for the front of the Bel Air so let's get started all right it's another day and uh much better weather, no more rain. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get the 55 up in the air, get the front end up, and uh, we're gonna get back on these brake lines. All right, so I got it up in the air, got it on jack stands, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, drum brakes. This is what they actually look like. Uh, so many of the Tri-5s are upgraded to front disc brakes, some of them even four-wheel disc brakes. Uh, this one's uh, pretty old school, so. Uh, again, we're just going to go ahead and get this thing back on the road and then uh, once I get it running and driving again Then I can take on projects like disc brake conversions uh, Dual master cylinder that kind of stuff, but in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and get these uh, old brake lines off. I've already used my uh, Flare nut wrench uh, on that and got that broken loose and then we'll get these uh, Hoses out of here because they've been on the car for a long time so just wanted to use this tool. This uh, it's a Craftsman. It's a brake tool. Uh, you've got the cup with uh, the hook on the end, and basically what you do with this is you stick that over the guide pin for the brake springs, and then pry it backwards. Basically, get your brake springs off without uh, losing a finger. So this is really a slick slick tool so so we got that off and one of the things that I like to do I like to put all my bearings and all the the castle nut the lock or the uh, cotter pin put it all inside the, the bearing uh, cover cup and uh, that way you don't lose anything and you don't get grease all over the place so uh, looks like we had the wheel seal come off come out of the drum so I'll have to get new wheel seals and we'll clean up the bearings hopefully all the bearings are good and then use plenty of blue rags for getting off this excess grease so as far as the retaining springs I pretty much use that same cup and use it and push it on the back and then you can twist the pin and then it unlocks it so it's a little 90 degree turn same deal here except when they twist like that Oop. almost There we go. Now just fillet them back and your brake shoes come off ready to go. Now what we'll do with these is we're going to run them down to Long Beach Clutch and Brake. Um, I'm just not trustworthy of aftermarket brake shoes these days. I've got some in the garage that are ready to go, um, but I'm not real happy with them. I am really amazed that this didn't touch the drum. This is the back shoe, and this is the this is the front shoe. So I'm pretty sure these were Ray Bestis. I used a lot of Ray Bestis back in the day, but uh, yeah, we'll see if these can be relined, and uh, we'll get them over there as soon as we can. Get this cleaned up. Got a new wheel cylinder, and. Uh, We'll put the new brake line, new brake hose, and we'll be back in business 
as quick as we can. All right, so here's a better look at both of uh, the brake shoes. Uh, this is the left side. Um, they were getting a little bit thin on that back shoe. Uh, definitely beyond what I want to be driving on, uh, but no cracks. Uh, maybe a little one here down the center. Uh, but this uh, passenger side, yeah, that's really bad. That's embarrassing, um, you know, to think that I was driving around on this. Um, just amazing how busy life gets with kids and stuff like that. And you just, uh, you know, you just don't have time to go out and do the maintenance items that you really need to be doing on your car. And this is proof positive as to why you need to do that. So this is uh, not going to happen again. So, um, pulled the drums off, uh, or pulled them out, looked at them, and uh, amazingly, there is just no damage. None of the metal shoe touched the drums at all. There's no grooves, there's no, no lip on it, no nothing. Uh, only thing that's bad is obviously the wheel seal, which you can see here. And 20 years of sitting, I guess that's just... Uh, what happened so you can see a little bit of rust on the drums there um, but yeah the drums are in really nice shape um, so I'll probably run over to Classic Industries grab some front wheel seals uh, we're gonna take the brake shoes over to Friction Materials they're an old-school clutch and brake uh, company that relines clutches and relines brakes been around since the 30s and uh, they've told me 24 hour turnaround time on the brake shoes. And then we'll uh, inspect the bearings real good, make sure that the cages are all in one piece and uh, that the races aren't uh, grooved heavily, which is typically what you'd find in a Tri-5 if you're still running ball bearing, front wheel bearings. And yeah, it shouldn't get this bad. It sh I should have never, I should have been inspecting this a lot more instead of just throwing the car on the trailer Friday night and going to the drags and uh, you know when you beat the car up or beat on the car it took a lot of abuse and I'm amazed at uh, you know all that abuse and then turn around sitting for 20 years that uh, you know it's not worse so um, so we'll get it cleaned up we'll get it fixed up and we'll get this brake system back in 100% working order and uh, get this thing turnkey and then later on as one of my first projects is going to probably be to put a dual master cylinder and a front disc brake kit on this. So we're going to go ahead and bring the drums in and the brake shoes. We're going to get the brake shoes relined and then we're going to have the brake shoes uh, arced or fitted to the drum. All right, we are here at Friction Materials. Brake lining and clutch relining. Old school shop. So here they are. Well, cool. So this is the brake shop side over here, on, and then you do the clutches here. That's right. Yeah, All awesome. Models, models are done. We got doctor number two chewed up. It's just a matter of having the right parts and, and the parts being in good enough condition that we can rebuild them. Wow. And was that your dad that I talked to you up front? Yeah. Is he? So what did he say about the German lining? So we actually pick up a special German lining that's better on the, the braking surface and the drums. So oh, okay. It's not tearing up on the drums like the old uh, semi-metallic. Yeah, ones. and they're not uh, riveted, they're glued, so Yeah, we do they strictly don't, uh, bonding without riveting on all of our older stuff so that we're not going rivet to rivet, metal to metal on the, the drums. Awesome, awesome. You guys do, probably do a lot of truck stuff, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's awesome. Truck and industrial stuff. I mean, they are big enough to do a lot of caterpillar. Wow, wow. Well, good stuff. Uh, one of the best parts of the service that uh, Friction Materials provides, uh, aside from getting this really great quality German uh, brake material uh, onto your brake shoes and relining your brake shoes, uh, one of the other services they provide for a little a few extra bucks is they'll actually arc the shoe to the drum to fit the drum. And what that means is, is they're going to go ahead and put the new material on the brake shoes and they're going to go ahead 
and grind them and make them smooth um, to where they actually fit the actual arc of the drum. So if you see here with the brake shoe pushed up against the drum, and if you had a flashlight underneath this thing, you would not see any daylight whatsoever. Uh, that's something that they're able to do at their shop. And it really, it's kind of basically like blueprinting your brake system to where you've got every part of the brake surface touching the drum. And I've done this quite a few times in the past with my Tri-5s. And it's been... You know, aside from Howie's Hardtop, which is the only Tri-5 out of my five that actually has disc brakes, I have done this before in the past with all of my other Tri-5s, and it's really been a great setup. Just one of the services that they provide, being able to arc the drum, it's, it's a real, or arc the shoe to the drum, it's a real old school process, but um, very few shops do it anymore, and these guys still do it, and it's a big help for me, and I went ahead and had it done for the Bel Air. Went ahead and uh, put my pan underneath the wheel. It's got some really cheap brake uh, cleaner from Walmart and got a brush and just basically soaking everything, getting the backing plate all cleaned up because obviously the wheel seal uh, let go of some stuff. Um, it's kind of nice because the pan catches all the, the brake cleaner and uh, you can just kind of keep using it without having to Go through whole cans of this stuff because this stuff's not cheap yeah the backing plates are cleaning up real nice we did uh black emron on everything and the backing plates actually believe it or not these things will wax up and have a nice a real nice shine on them uh it does have some pitting right there but uh still holding up pretty good since all this was done back in 85 i think we did actually no we did this back in 80 84 so we'll get this cleaned up and then got the brake parts the wheel bearings and everything soaking in the in the gas and uh we'll clean those up and get it put back together all right i got all the brake parts uh, cleaned up at least this is one axle um and i just looked over the bearings there was one little mark right here uh you could see that little line um you know and i've seen that happen before in fact this may even be the bearing that i pulled out last and remembered seeing that all right so as you saw uh the original factory tri-5 hub with the ball bearing uh hubs ended up having bad seals or actually the hubs were bad we couldn't get the seals to fit on the hubs so in the other video you saw where we opted to rebuild a set of 61 to 68 full-size chevy hubs we ended up getting these off of a 64 Impala. Uh, one of them out of the pair that I got were bad, so I was able to pick up a single, and I've since rebuilt that. These are all ready to go on the Bel Air. I also picked up uh, another pair. This one's going to be for the Gasser. Uh, here's a third pair. That one's going to be for the 55 four-door, if I ever get that thing home and get around to it. And this was a spare set of... Uh, of the later hubs. We've also bought uh, plenty of parts to get, uh, well, these, these we're going to set aside, but the, uh, the three sets of hubs that we have here, we've got enough parts to put those back on the road to fully restore those. You can see we've got new wheel studs. Uh, those were, this was the Dorman part number, come in a box of 10. was able to get those on um, Amazon. And uh, the Timken bearings, I actually found a place in Florida. I was able to get bearing sets, and it's kind of hard to focus in. These GoPros don't go in real close, but uh, they are made in USA Timken bearings, which is great because Tim Timken's been bought out recently, and they've got a new corporation that's taken them over. And I'm sure, just like everything else, uh, production will probably go overseas in the original Timken quality will probably go down. Don't quote me on that, but that's typically what's happened in the past. So uh, so anyway, I've got all made in USA bearings for the hubs. I also have some CR seals, which I got from Napa. Um, these are, this is the part number for the 61 to 68 or the Impala seals. Uh, these are actually made in Mexico, um, you know, back in the day. That wasn't a good thing, but actually their production has... Uh, uh, picked up quite a bit and they're um, 
probably a much better choice than going overseas. I also picked up some grease caps or some dust caps from Classic Industries. The only problem was that they only had one set or one pair, so I picked up another pair from Napa. Um, not a big, super big fan of these because they're rounded versus the squared ones that they had at Classic Industries. And then the other issue that was a problem was the original Tri-5 washer. <clears throat> you know, they worked fine on the Tri-5 hub. You had plenty of room uh, for the grease cap because the grease cap actually, or the dust cap actually fit over the hub. The problem with these is the dust caps are smaller and the large Tri-5 spindle washer uh, literally takes up the whole entire inner diameter of the hub. So there's no way to get the dust cover to fit over that. So I ended up having to go and purchase some Impala washers. I got those from Napa and now they fit uh, no problem. And that's gonna be my new spindle washer. So I got a total of four of those and then I could continue to use the original Tri-5 Castle nuts. All right, so got the vacuum plate all cleaned up and pretty amazing how uh, that Imron paint held up for all those years, you know, back paint job, paint back in the mid eighties on this and it's still, uh, still got a good shine on it. Anyway, uh, I got the, uh, uh, I got, I got the master cylinder main anchor bolt, uh, here and I just happen to have a passenger front wheel cylinder and kind of hard to tell, but this one is, uh, it's actually made here so let's go ahead and get this thing put on and when I pulled this part uh, the actual anchor pin was uh, was actually loose it was almost hand tight um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a little little thread locker on it just to make sure and then when we uh, put that one inch wrench on it we'll have it uh, snug down so it won't move around but uh, yeah all right well, let's put this thing on. So on the last uh, pictures that the drums had some grease from where the grease seals uh, weren't touching. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and put them in the solvent tank here and get all that uh, wheel bearing grease off the drums. So I went ahead and painted the drums, got them all painted up because you could see the areas where I had to grind away the rivets from the original stock Tri-5 hubs, uh, left some marks on there and we needed to get those painted up. I just didn't want these things rusting. And um, you know, the brake drum springs, not sure if everybody knows what those are for. It's just kind of a harmonics thing. Now that all the parts are cleaned up and uh, we've got the brake uh, backing plate all cleaned up, we're gonna go ahead and get ready to do all the reassembly. Um, just gonna go ahead and start with uh, a little bit of grease we're gonna go ahead and put some grease on the contact points. There's six contact points on the backing plates. Yeah, we just put a little bit of grease on there. Hopefully it won't, uh, you know, not too much that it gets on the brake shoes and uh, taints the brake shoes. Now that we've got the contact points greased, now we're gonna go ahead and we've got the new uh, relined brake shoes. We've got the small shoe that's gonna go on the front. So we'll put that one on the front. And actually what I like to do is I actually like to put the spring in first and set that up with the lower spring on first. And I've got this all cleaned and ready to go. Put just a smidge of grease. Uh, actually, probably should have put it on the threads too. But because um, the spring is actually going to hold the star washer and hold that in place from spinning but just have a little bit of grease on the threads a little bit of grease on the cap itself we'll go ahead and spin this all the way in taking all the adjustment out and we're gonna go ahead and line that star washer up with the hole the adjusting the brake adjusting hole and I'll show you how that comes out make sure you get grease on these new brake shoes But the actual spring adjuster and the spring, at least on the bottom half of the brake shoes, 
I like to pre-install those so that's what you end up having. And just making sure that the star washer is lined up with that hole. So we'll go ahead and put that up here in place. Make sure that we grab a hold of, let's see, it's kind of difficult to hold in place, but I'll show you right here. So I've got the pins, the locating pins are in place on the brake shoe. Uh, here's the guide pin and I've got the lower brake spring and the brake adjuster. Of course it's lined up with the hole so that the star is lined up with that hole so you can do your brake adjustments and everything's basically put into place. So the next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and um, we'll put the the pins on. We've got the gold pins that go in from the back of the backing plates and go through the brake shoe is kind of difficult to do with one hand and <clears throat> we've got the backing washer which makes a cup put that in place on each of the pins then we can take the spring put the springs on Let's see if we can do this with one hand while holding the whole assembly here and then we'll take the other cup washer and put that over the spring. We'll push down on the spring, get it over the pin, and twist it 90 degrees. So now we've basically got it in spot in place. And let me just go ahead and do the other one while everything's apart here or while I, while I got it all lined up. Let's see. If you're able to, you can twist the pin from the back side. Twist it at 90 degrees. And now you've got the pin is seated on that washer. It's turned 90 degrees and holding it in place. I like to kind of line everything up, make sure that it's not twisted. And this one's kind of twisted. I'll see if I could straighten that out a little better. So the, the uh, brake shoe springs are, are seated. They're in place. Everything's lined up. Got everything lined up up here. We're going to go ahead and put the upper primary springs in place. And at this point, we'll go ahead and put the, the backing washer on it. that lined up so it's in the shoe and this is my <clears throat> this is my brake spring installer and that's basically how that works just like that so go ahead and do the same for the other spring put that in one hand here while filming and there you go so those are in place I'll go ahead and tighten those up a little bit with some needle nose okay now that the brake shoes are on and everything's uh, cinched down put into place uh, it's time to go ahead and grease the wheel bearings and put them in the hubs and then we'll put the seals on we'll go ahead and uh, mount the hubs and get that going so um, there's a couple ways you can do that. Obviously, uh, you can do it the old-fashioned way where you just put the big glop of grease on the glove and you just start smashing the open end of the bearing down onto the grease to kind of pack the needle bearings inside there. Keep doing it that way. Uh, or um, I've got a, a tool from Lyle and um, this is basically something that you could hook up your Zerk fitting to your grease gun it fills the tube and it basically pressurizes the bearing with uh, wheel grease once you put it in place so let me get that set up and i'll show you go 
ahead and spin the bearing off. Or I should say spin the cone off. Now it looks like it pretty much got almost the whole entire bearing um, take a closer look here definitely got the top or I should say the bottom luckily I have a can of the same wheel bearing grease it's it's basically the stay lube uh, new generation stay lube is an old 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 school company been around since the 50s but probably even earlier than that and I used to use it all the time in the 70s um, but it the quality kind of got went downhill with it and um, I actually had a rear end failure using some stay lube gear oil um, but the thing that's great about stay lube now is it got bought out by CRC and it's actually one of the top rating wheel bearing greases out on the market so uh, yeah if you stick with this new generation uh, in the purple can it's uh, it's good stuff so all right um, you can see here it pretty much got the whole entire bearing We'll go ahead and take the excess and just smear it around the face of the needle bearings so that the whole entire needle or, or the face of the bearing assembly is uh, lubricated or it's actually got uh, grease on it. And then what we'll do is, this is where I forgot my rags, and then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and set the bearing actually one of the things we want to do, go ahead and do this with some of the excess grease from the bearing, but we'll go ahead and put some, some bearing grease inside the hub so that it's got extra grease inside the hub and we've got the, the bearing race coated and then we'll go ahead and seat the bearing on the race. Now we're ready to put the grease seal in. We've got the hub everything's greased in the in the rear bearing this is actually the inner bearing and uh, what we'll go ahead and do now is we have the new grease seal that we're going to put on this is the one that i got from napa so i'll go ahead and uh, set the camera up to where we could watch this and i'll go ahead and i'm basically just going to go ahead and use my wood um, driver and we're going to go ahead and walk this thing into place and we may actually end up using our old bearing race uh, to help uh, drive this thing in. We'll just basically knock the high spots down. All right, again, you can see the, the bearing, uh, the grease went in through the top of the, the bigger open portion of the bearing and it went all the way through to the smaller end. So each one of these pins got uh, some grease on it. The only thing that we need to do is we'll go ahead and take some of the excess off of the uh, the the greaser and we'll go ahead and just smear it around the face and we will also we'll also go ahead and smear some on put all the excess back in the center but we'll also go ahead and smear some grease on the face of the race and we're basically ready to put that in place Okay, now that the bearings are greased and the hub's ready to go back on, um, and we've got the seal in place with the inner bearing, the big bearing, uh, behind the seal or, or contained by the seal, uh, we'll go ahead and put this on the uh, spindle. Went ahead and put a little, just a light bit of grease on the seal surface itself, but um, we're going to go ahead and put this on. Maybe a little glop of grease that comes out with it. Okay. That's that. Get the glop of grease. Get that out. Okay, so again, this is the 61 to 68 full size Chevy spindle. This one, these just happen to come off of a 64 Impala. And um, as far as the, the fit. And the measurements everything is the same everything fits the same the way the original tri-5 hub does except that we now have the updated 
uh, needle bearings or roller bearings instead of the ball bearings. So we'll go ahead and get the 61 to 68 Chevy washer because we know that the other one was too big a diameter and we'll go ahead and put this on. We're just going to put it on temporarily and put the castle nut on. We're not going to tighten these down just yet. And go ahead and lift the drum into place. Give it a little, little whack. And that's it. So nice and quiet, nothing rubs. Alright, I like to be able to walk the drum back and forth, but being that the drums and the rivets, or I should say the drums are no longer riveted onto the hubs, we're going to end up putting the wheel on and then we'll just use the wheel uh, to test to see if the hubs are loose. got the castle nut on and um, one of the things I typically do is I just grab the top of the wheel and move it in and out or back and forth I should say and you could hear as well as feel that the castle nuts loose to kind of maybe exaggerate it, it basically does that and you could hear it and when the castle nut is adjusted properly so I've got my um, my factory bag or my lug nuts that aren't uh, the acorn nuts on this one. It's just to basically lock the wheel down. It's, it's just temporary. So um, I typically, during this situation, I will get my channel locks, get them adjusted properly, and I'll actually over tighten the wheel so that it stops or doesn't spin freely because of the tightness of the bearing and of course you can check to see if it moves which it doesn't there's no glunking or clicking or anything where it wants to move at all so but it is a little bit too tight because of the bearing um, so what I'm gonna do is I'll back that off And I'm actually lined up with the cotter pin right now. There's no movement there. And the wheel spins freely. So at this point, I'm pretty happy with how that is. So what I'll do is I'll put the new cotter pin in and then put the new grease cap in. And you can see, it's on crooked, but you can see that the Impala hub uh, works fine. There's no issues with clearance or rubbing or anything of that effect and This thing will be ready to go and we won't have to worry about those old expensive unsafe ball bearings Got new stainless steel cotter pins Go ahead and Put that in everything lines up and We'll go ahead and Use The needle nose and it's all good okay and now we're ready to put the cap on and we're ready to go so that's it so that's all I got guys that's uh, replacing the hubs with uh, the more modern roller bearing and uh, getting rid of the ball bearing types so big difference a lot better it's a complete true bolt-on as you could see all the heights are the same with the stock tri-5 hub 
versus the Impala Hub 61 to 68 full size Chevy. That's pretty much all I got, guys. If you uh, are interested in this kind of stuff, the Tri 5 stuff, uh, some hints, some basic uh, ideas, stuff that I've learned uh, over the 40, geez, it's almost been 50 years since I've been working on these cars. Um, you know, go ahead and drop a sub. It'd be nice to have you on board. And, um, you know, I, I'd love to hear from other people to find out if there's better ways that you guys have found to doing these cars. I'm always up for learning. Uh, the day you stop learning is the day that you're put into the dirt, as far as I'm concerned. So, um, yeah, appreciate it, guys. Thanks for watching. And um, we'll keep continuing on this 55 Bel Air two-door sedan. Take care, guys.